All right, so we're going to do a review of Newton's laws, friction, and motion. Okay, so the first thing let's talk about is Newton's laws. There's three of them. So Newton's laws of motion, number one, has to do when F net equals zero Newtons. That does not mean there's no forces. It means the external forces are balanced. Okay, so F net equals zero means external forces are balanced on an object. What does it mean about the motion? It means it's moving at a constant velocity. It also means it could be stopped because zero velocity is a uniform velocity. Number two, when F net is not zero, when F net is not zero, it equals mass times the acceleration of the object. And I guess we should talk about what F net is as well, okay? Is F net is the sum of all the forces. Notice I always put vectors on these and I always put dot, dot, dot because I don't know how many there are in a question. So we add all the forces together. Okay, so if those if these add up to be zero, it's moving at a constant velocity. If they don't add up to be zero, they equal mass times acceleration. Okay, so um, an object accelerates in the direction of F net. Okay. And that acceleration also depends on the mass. Remember, this is a summary. This is not every single detail. If you want to go read the full Newton's second law, you can do that. Just a quick summary. Now, the third one is that for every action force, there exists a reaction force. Reaction force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and that's where the negative sign comes in this is the opposite direction and the equal means exactly what it means equal now the thing you need to remember that students make mistakes about is that just because two forces are equal and opposite does not make them an action reaction pair. What's important is that they exist because of one another. And they exist in pairs. Meaning that if one doesn't exist, then the other one doesn't. Okay, so that's Newton's laws. Now we have friction. Okay, there's two types of friction. Okay, there's static and there is kinetic friction. Okay. Static keeps an object from moving. And kinetic acts on it while an object is moving. Okay. And static friction is always larger than kinetic friction. 
For this, we have to understand this little funny Greek symbol. It's fun to write. It's mu. You say it like a kitten, mu. Okay. This is the coefficient of friction, and it appears in an equation. Okay. The force of friction is equal to mu Fn. Okay. If you remember what Fn is, Fn is the normal force. Okay. Which in most of grade 11 cases on horizontal surfaces, we have Fn is equivalent to Fg, which is mg, the force of gravity, the mass times acceleration due to gravity. Okay, now you notice these don't have vectors. The reason they don't have vectors is because usually friction is along the surface and the normal acts up from the surface. So these are just magnitudes. That's why there's no arrows on them. Okay. And usually friction acts in the opposite direction, but it does not need to act in the opposite direction of motion. For example, walking. All right, and the other thing is um, mu, there's a table of value, table of values in your textbook, okay, that are found experimentally by scientists, okay? The biggest thing to know about motion with all of these is the difference between accelerated motion and uniform motion. Okay? So there's only one equation for uniform motion or constant velocity. Okay? Uniform motion slash constant velocity is... V equals displacement, e, sorry, velocity equals displacement over time. And then the other equations are for uniform acceleration. Okay, they're on your formula sheet. And they are the big five. Okay, hopefully I can fit them here. Nope. All right, and so I squeeze them in here. We have acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. And displacement equals V1 times time plus one half A delta T squared. Displacement equals final velocity times time minus one half A delta T squared. Okay, so these look very similar but the one goes with the plus and the two goes with the minus. And then we have V2 squared equals V1 squared plus two A delta D. And finally, displacement equals V1 plus V2 divided by two times time interval. So what I'll do is I'll use these ideas. If you need to pause it and copy these down, I'll use these to solve a question on the next page.